September 7th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Timothy chapter 5 from the New Testament. Do not address an older man harshly, but appeal to him as a father. Speak to younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, and younger women as sisters, with complete purity. Honor widows who are truly in need. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, they should first learn to fulfill their duty toward their own household and so repay their parents what is owed them, for this is what pleases God. But the widow who is truly in need and completely on her own has set her hope on God and continues in her pleas and prayers night and day. But the one who lives for pleasure is dead even while she lives. Reinforce these commands so that they will be beyond reproach. But if someone does not provide for his own, especially his own family, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. No widow should be put on the list unless she is at least 60 years old, was the wife of one husband and has a reputation for good works, as one who has raised children, practiced hospitality, washed the feet of the saints, help those in distress as one who has exhibited all kinds of good works. But do not accept younger widows on the list, because their passions may lead them away from Christ and they will desire to marry, and so incur judgment for breaking their former pledge. And besides that, going around from house to house, they learn to be lazy, and they are not only lazy, but also gossips and busybodies talking about things they should not. So I want younger women to marry, raise children, and manage a household in order to give the adversary no opportunity to vilify us. For some have already wandered away to follow Satan. If a believing woman has widows in her family, let her help them. The church should not be burdened so that it may help the widows who are truly in need. Elders who provide effective leadership must be counted worthy of double honor especially those who work hard in speaking and teaching. For the scripture says, Do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain, and the worker deserves his pay. Do not accept an accusation against an elder unless it can be confirmed by two or three witnesses. Those guilty of sin must be rebuked before all as a warning to the rest. Before God and Christ Jesus and the elect angels, I solemnly charge you to carry out these commands without prejudice or favoritism of any kind. Do not lay hands on anyone hastily, and so identify with the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. Stop drinking just water, but use a little wine for your digestion and your frequent illnesses. The sins of some people are obvious, going before them into judgment, but for others they show up later. Similarly, good works are also obvious, and the ones that are not cannot remain hidden. God, thank you so much for all that you've given me. You've overwhelmed me with blessings of an incredible place to live, food on my table, uh, clothes on my back, a warm house, a cool house, depending upon what I want. Uh, a car to get around uh, to various places, a, my own business, like all of these amazing blessings that I know other people in this world may not have. And Paul is talking about, specifically in this chapter, he's talking about taking care of widows because back in those times, uh, widows truly had no way of taking care of themselves. It's not like today where there's supposedly social security, there's... Um, people who can work later in life, um, that there's a certain programs for this. Back then there was nothing for them to be able to do. In fact, women in general um, had a very hard time financially of supporting themselves. Very few of them were able to work on their own. Um, so Paul is talking about, in this case, in historical times, it was very difficult for the female um, widow who was over 60 to take care of herself and so the community the christian community was responsible for that and today uh, we don't have have that specific but we do have a lot of people who struggle with taking care of themselves whether they're homeless and um, need food or need shelter um, perhaps they're mentally handicapped and they're struggling with with maybe some 
uh, disease, illness, maybe psychologically. I just think of all the people I've encountered when I've talked to people on the streets. Um, there's just uh, lots of people out there that need us for a variety of reasons. And for, for those of us who you've given so much to, so many incredible blessings, um, as Paul talks about, I wouldn't be a person who could say they have faith. I would be worse than an unbeliever if I had all of this and didn't share it with others, if I didn't take care of others. Now, they're not technically my family. We're not related by DNA. In fact, most of the time when I go out to the streets, I don't even know these people. Um, I'm getting to know some of them. Um, but I don't do it simply because I'm commanded to in the, in the Bible to take care and love other people. I truly love giving away what is mine um, to the point that I kind of wish that that's the only thing I could do. <laughs> Instead of having to work during the day, it would be nice to just go down and talk to people, hand out Bibles, hand out food, um, see if I can help them get into shelter programs. Like I truly just love those days when I get to do that. Um, so God, I, I truly thank you on two different levels. One that you've blessed me with so much. Um, I'm just stunned and overwhelmed at, at all that you have given me, including the fact I live here in the United States. But the second part of that is that you have given me a new heart, one that loves others, not with a conditional love here on earth, a worldly love, uh, but truly the unselfish love that you have for us. Now, mine's not as deep as yours, uh, but I do truly love taking care of others and giving them what is mine, um, which is technically not even mine to begin with. It's all yours. Uh, and and helping other people. Uh, and sometimes it may just be food for the weekend. Um, and hopefully other people are doing what they need to do as well. But it comes from the fact that you have given me so much, God, that I wake up every morning. I'm not hungry. I'm not cold or I'm not hot. <laughs> I'm not dripping wet because it rained last night and, and I didn't have a roof over my head. Um, I have clothes to, to pick from and a, a great job to go to. Uh, the very least I can do as a believer is share that with people who don't have as much as I do uh, to take care of those who are in need or as uh, Paul puts it, in distress. God, please allow our hearts to always unselfishly love others to reach out to them, to help them in whatever it is that they need. And sometimes they just need somebody to talk to, maybe somebody to pray for them, maybe somebody to just help point them in a different direction um, or help them get shelter or help them find food, whatever it is, God, there's so much that we can do for other people. Remind us that all that we have in this world, you gave us, you blessed us with. And now it is our great honor to get to share it with others and help their lives. I know that when I do that, it seems like I'm way more blessed than anybody else I'm ever helping. Um, just the fact that I can give away what I do have. God, you're just absolutely amazing. And I am floored constantly by how much you love us and take care of us. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>